Rue in Jackson, Mississippi. See more better with free prescription lenses.com and do I have a surprise for you? Why is it a surprise? Because you have no idea that you're getting this. These are the Ray-Ban 4105, color 601, the shiny black, the 50 eye size. What could be in this box that is going to have polarized gray lenses installed? It is the folding Wayfair. Of course, you got your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, this cute little case. The only thing I wish they would do differently, put a belt loop on here because uh, it looks like the old school beepers that you could wear on your case. But the reason why this is a surprise is that someone loves you very much. And that person we shall call mom. <laughs> and uh, not, not, not my mom. My mom didn't even like me. But uh, your mom likes you enough to surprise you. Now you got a pair of these last year with the clear lenses in them and liked them so much she wants you to have another one. And of course whenever I open these up I like to use uh, old 70s martial art sound effects. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to do that with less spitting next time. But we're going to turn these into, you have these with the clear lenses. We're going to do these with the polarized lenses. Now, I did all the hard work. I took out the original glass lenses, and yes, that was very hard. But and then, again, for those of you keeping score at home, this is the Ray-Ban 4105, color 601, the 50 eye size, 22 bridge, and of course, folding Wayfair. So let me begin. And also let me begin by... This guy, who's going to be in every video, this is Larry. I did a pair of glasses for him the other day. It's the Ray-Ban 8901. He's trying to convince everyone to get 100 likes on his video. If he does, he thinks I'm going to send him a frame. I will give him a frame, but he has to walk here to get it. And he's in uh, somewhere in Missouri. So, Mr. Missouri, show me that you're going to walk here. So, don't like his video. Like Ruse instead. Mom, you hear that? Like Rue's video. So, let's begin. I'm going to put uh, the frame into the tracing element of my blocker. We're going to program the shape in there. Your secret agent 1373. Years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, I can send you lenses only. And it's programmed. It'll be programmed into the computer after tonight. I'm going to hit start. A little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace both sides of the frame. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have flex dollars, health savings account or vision insurance you will get reimbursed for this purchase. Look I love it how it says Ray-Ban right on the inside there. Pretty cool. So. In just a moment, your shape's going to pull up on the computer. 1373, 1373. We'll move on to the next screen. Your pupillary distance is 32 for each eye. The computer starts at 32.5. So I'm going to tap the minus button one time to bring it down to 32. I am going to raise the optical center up 2 millimeters. And, which is the same optical center. So essentially, just like the crosshairs of a scope, I measure vertically and horizontally to make sure the, the, the thinnest part of this lens, which is your optical center, will be directly in front of your pupil. Your lens are thin in the center, thicker at the edges, so the thinnest part of the lens, don't worry, mom, this is still an unbreakable lens, will be directly in front of your pupil. So I need to put a couple dots on your lenses. I assume this is the right eye and assume this is the left. This comes from the lab that way. I'm going to... Put the power drum, let's make sure everything's on zero. Yeah, and put it on minus four, which is the power of your right eye. And I'll, I'll explain your powers later. I'm going to find the center of your lens. And I'm going to put three dots on there. Really, I only need one because you have no astigmatism. It's because of the astigmatism we put more than one dot on there. And, of course, I need to put more ink in here. So I'll tell you what, this is what we're going to do. I'm only going to put ink on the center dot, right, that's going to sit directly in front of your eye. Larry, if you get 100 likes, you got to get me a new lensometer, one that will hold ink. How's that sound? Alright, let's put it in over that, and find the center of the lens, put a dot on there. There's a good one. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Power is minus 450 minus 450 put that in find the optical center of the lens 
and put a dot on the lens. The reason why I'm going to use these from the lab. Now here's a good teaching moment. The way you can tell if lenses are polarized is if you hold them up to a light and put one in front of the other, light passes through them, but you hear the term polar opposites. So when it's 90 degrees apart, it will go pitch black and you're not going to be able to see through the lens. Hang on, I'm just getting email. Root, how's that? That's a cool email to get. So, the reason why there's yellow dots on there is going to tell me that it lays out the how's that for coolness. So, polarized lenses block glare sources. An LCD screen is a glare source, so that's why you're getting that prismatic effect on here. But it's going to give me those straight lines, so I'm going to put that on there. Put that dot in the center and just make sure that those are horizontal on that, on that graph line. And they are. So, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I need a block. This is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers. Like that, my tissue box is here. It was here. I took it away because so much lint was falling out and getting inside here and getting glasses all dusty. That I decided to change it up. You didn't see that coming now, did y'all? The people who watch all my videos. You can actually see, yes, that is a transitions box. My tissue is down here now. I reserve the right to move it even more. Hey, I could, nah, it won't fit here. Never mind, I'll find a place for it. I'll find a place. So, I put the sticker on there, pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. On the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and inset inside that orange crosshair. Again, we're going to get everything lined up there perfectly. Make sure everything is lined up where it's supposed to be. Hit this button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. We're going to put that... Well, let's pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet there into the arm. Same pupillary distance on the left as it was on the right. Same optical center height that has mirrored it. I'm going to put that black dot directly in front of your pupil. Those are lined up on a straight meridian. Make sure the lens is large enough. That's my thumb. That's my index finger. Hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. Now here's something I want to do a little bit differently. Because sometimes the lab puts that very strong yellow paint on there, I want to clean that off before it is cut. I don't like any chemicals to be near the edge of the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and remove as much of that as possible. I only need that black dot on the back, which is underneath that sticker, to verify and inspect the lens later. So it just makes it easier to clean. I'm going to do the same thing now. Clean up as I go. See, this is something different. Now, Rue and his mother are probably watching this for the first time. They had no idea that I do the videos. They contacted me through another source, not realizing that I have probably about, I now have about 764. Now, I know this one's the right one. I can tell by the way that's in set. But I, as of today, 764 videos that I have done. So that's something different that you get to see so I don't sound like a broken record. You get to see something different. Now this is the edger. This costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, chip in a little extra, tip me so I can pay this thing off. But no, I recommend everyone go out and buy their own. Put it on your kitchen counter. You won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. So I'm going to wake up the computer. It now says 1373. 1373, that is the shape that I'll be cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic or Trivex, which are different materials, I would select that, but we're going to stay with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it's not going to be seen. And here's something a little different. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface, nor am I going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of it because these are sunglass lenses. When I do a safety bevel, there's a, a white ring around that, and I'm going to avoid that by keeping everything dark. I am going to do something a little different too. I'm going to cut this on the manual cycle and I'm going to manually place where the bevel goes. That's something you don't normally see either. So I'm going to hit the green arrow with the start. The door closes. The clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the right lens. 
and then now it stopped because it's waiting for my cue. I'm actually going to move the bevel forward, which is going to move the lens back. If the bevel is on the front of the lens, it goes back. If the bevel is on the back of the lens, it forces the lens forward. But I want to do it right at one millimeter, so I'm going to put it on the front bevel, and I'm going to go down to one millimeter all the way around. I want it to tuck in the front I want the front of the lens tucked in so there's no white ring. I do this on sunglasses. So I'm going to hit the green arrow, which is start. And now the cutting wheel, if I had cleaned this door in advance, you would see it. the cutting wheel is starting to spin. The light you see flickering in the background is water to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Now polycarbonate lenses cut dry, meaning that no water sprays onto the lens during the cutting cycle. Water does spray onto plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex. Now, water will spray onto this lens, but only for the last 20 seconds to wash away any optical debris that you may happen to see beginning to form on the edge of the lenses. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These, Mom, are you paying attention for Rue? You're protecting him. These are high-impact ballistics-grade lenses that protect his eyes from, well, actually, this is the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes, as well as the same lens material that OSHA requires that anyone who works on a factory floor wear. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. I like the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun there in Jackson, Mississippi. Actually, that's why I mailed the last pair. I assume you're still in Jackson. I don't know. Since you didn't reach out to me, Mom got these for you. What a sweet and loving Mom. She loves you so much. Now, remember to brush your teeth every night before going to bed and floss. No, <laughs> um, But yeah, these are virtually unbreakable lenses and as I mentioned these are impact high ballistics grade lenses so now if you notice your lens is flat all the way around just like a nickel if I were to take it out now it would uh, stand up on the counter on its own the machine is using its own check and balance system to go around and see where to exactly how it's going to place the bevel onto that middle wheel which is the bevel wheel I forgot to point that out I'll do it before I start the second lens so now it's getting the V-shaped bevel, so as it stays inside the bevel of the frame. It'll have a knife-like edge, a very dull knife, such a, much like myself, but a knife-like edge nonetheless. But your lens will be so sharp that you might be able to cut through a piece of wet tissue, providing you soak the tissue in a bucket of water overnight, and then using all your strength, saw away at that tissue, you might be able to cut through it with this lens. So water has begun spraying, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. It also reminds me that I need to take a bath. Spring is coming. I take a bath every spring whether I need one or not. So we should be done because there's no safety bevel coming out. There's no other wheel. So in just a moment, I will open this door with my mind. If you like that, I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. It just takes me a couple hours, but I can do it. So I'm going to dry everything off. Run my thumbnail around to make sure all the optical sawdust is off on the edge of your lens. And I doubt very seriously that it's going to fit in there, but we're going to see. No, it's not. So I'm going to take it down a quarter of a millimeter. This goes down in one twentieth of a millimeter increment. So I'm going to tap this five times to at minus 0.25. I'll probably have to do some more. I'm going to press that on there. So the actual cutting wheel, as I forgot to tell you, is this diamond crusted wheel. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper. That's what grounds your lens down to the final size. This wheel in the center, that channel, that little valley, that's what put that V-shaped bevel on the front of the lens. So I'm going to put this into the, this magnet's going to go into the Chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. I'm going to hit the retouch button and now it's going to take a quarter millimeter of the way off. 
Yeah, I know you don't like it when I tell the Chuck joke for people who watch my videos, but I remind everyone, if you can think of a funnier joke, write it down on a $100 bill and mail it to me, and I will read your joke on the air and give you credit for it. You don't even have to include your name. I'll recognize your handwriting. Don't worry. I'll know who it is, and I'll give you credit. So the reason why I'm taking it down is that I don't want to force the lens into the frame. It would cause the frame to stretch or what we in the industry call roll. If you can imagine your frame is like a gutter, where it's an even sided thing like that. If the lens were too large, it would cause the bottom of the frame to roll outwards, giving you an ugly cosmetic look as well as shortening the life of the frame. Now the other thing a lot of labs will do is they will use heat. Here's a very expensive hair dryer. Let me take that off. All it does is blow hot air, just like a hair dryer, into this little dish. But a lot of people will warm the frame up to make the plastic more pliable to insert the lens. I only use this when I'm adjusting temple tips on the back of the frame because plastic can be brittle. When you heat it up, it makes it more pliable. But I do everything what's known as a cold mount. I mount the lens into the frame while it is cold. Now I am going to run my thumbnail around. Ooh, look at that. I love it when that optical sawdust, also known as Schwarf, comes off in one piece like that. Almost when you can get lint to come out of the, the lint trap in one piece. It's a good day when that does that. So actually I am going to go ahead and put a safety bevel. I want to take off any sharp edges left over from the cutting cycle. But I'm going to do that very, very lightly. This is just like another... Let me see if I can stop this again. <laughs> This is just like the bevel wheel on the edger. It has a little V-shaped groove here that I could manually put the bevel on there, but instead I'm going to move the smooth surface and I'm going to go around the edge of the lens all the way around very lightly. And essentially I'm going to, using friction, I'm going to melt any rough edges that are left over on the edge of your lens, causing that. that. Now I'm going to peel this off with my thumb which in my old days, my old lab equipment from three and four years ago, my earliest videos, I had to do this on every single lens. And I did it so much during the day that I wore a groove into my thumbnail. And that's why I could never have nice thumbnails. Not that guys want to have nice thumbnails, but even if I wanted one, I couldn't have one. So once all of that is off of your lens, I carefully collect it neatly into one pile on the counter. And then I wipe it on the floor. Mom, I know. Why did I do that? My wife hates it. Yes, she hates it when I make a mess. I promised her when I got my new lab. You see that? <laughs> that I wouldn't do that anymore. But I like to remind kids that kids, I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess. So kids, if you grow up and you want to make a mess at work, you got to stay in school. So I'm going to take it down a little bit more. Let's go to point 40. Four tenths of a millimeter small from the original size. Now the right lens takes a little bit longer. Once I get the right lens done, flip it over, cut the left lens the same size. Although with the left lens being a hair stronger, I may need to take it down about one twentieth to one tenth of a millimeter more. <coughs> this video is going to go a little bit longer than most. I apologize for the duration. I do not apologize for being a perfectionist and making sure that every pair of lenses gets cut is cut perfectly. I cut every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide and it's corny saying but that's the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra in the beginning I want to make sure everything is perfect it's not like you live next door or a block away you could come over have me work on the lens with you being half a United States away from me I'm in North Carolina you're in Mississippi it just makes it a little bit harder so I want to make sure it's perfect the first time because of that, your lenses were cut perfectly. You liked them so much you wanted a second pair. That is why. Now, here's where I say, I, now when I'm done, I write down that measurement on here. But your clear lenses are different than your sunglass lenses, so I want to make sure it's perfect every time. This time, I'm going to bypass the counter and just drop it directly on the floor. And the other nice thing is I do have a cleaning crew that comes in here every night who cleans, empties the trash washes my bathroom you know now that I think about them I should call them mom they clean my toilet and sink every night and they vacuum for me it's all paid in my rent look it snapped in there easily and so that's why I don't worry about making a mess because I know someone's going to clean it up so now that it's in there I'm going to flip that over to L press that on there firmly and just for the sake of argument let me just go one step smaller just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses. 
actually they used to be white they're getting a little dirty my cleaning crew won't come in and uh, clean that for me I have to point that out to them but it's going around tracing the left side to know where to place the bevel so you have the all right yeah go so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing of which you barely have any even though I moved it back but part of that is I don't want a white ring around the lens from that safety bevel and if any portion of the lens sticks out from the front you can see that so I make sure it's recessed so when you get these if you feel this little lip here that's going to feel different than your clear pair but I just again I'm a perfectionist I cut sunglass lenses a little differently than I do clear lenses so I took the block off use my hand approved drying method throw that back in there take the sticker off now this is the one thing I don't throw on the floor I do collect these I'm gonna add this to my sticker collection whoops look it's not <laughs> it's not listening to me it fell on the floor along with this so I'm gonna put that on there let me do the base it's not growing so let me see if I can make this a little bit more flat on the bottom all right we're gonna stick that back on there come down here to the lab I'm gonna put it in to my lensometer put it in above that black dot which is your optical center your pupillary distance and I am going to read minus four exactly that's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r starting at zero and going up in 0.25 in quarter increments all the way to so 0.25 0.50 0.75 1 and so on so you're on the 16th rung of a ladder you are nearsighted you need 16 steps of far-sighted correction to make everything the correct size with your glasses off everything is much too large that's why there's a minus sign your lenses will minify to make the image the correct size so now you have no astigmatism correction astigmatism correct uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights to look alike with the letters p and f so once the image is the correct size for people with with astigmatism we have to take away those fuzzy edges and that just tells us where to turn the fine tune knob for that now your left eye you need 18 steps of far-sighted correction so piece of cake to do that in glasses now you, again you got the ray-ban 4105 the frame sells for 160 normally a polarized lens in gray brown or the ray-ban g15 is at 119.99 for a total of 279.99 just checking on that to see where we're at it's actually getting the bevel put on there so in just a moment how cute is this little box of course your ray-ban cleaning cloth all of that i'm going to provide you with one of my own cleaning cloths so again water spraying onto the lens it does that for the last 20 seconds looks like you're in a car wash doesn't it so Let's take the lens out of the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, the Chucky Roo. Hey, y'all didn't see that coming. <laughs> so, still have some sharp edges, so I'm going to very lightly go all the way around the flattest part of this, of this handstone. And this is pretty much smooth. I can put my finger on it, it gets hot because of the friction, but it's just a very smooth wheel take that off use my thumbnail drop that on the counter I'm gonna write on here the size that I cut it down to that was minus 40 on the right I'll do the left when I'm done so again all the optical sawdust up collect it neatly into one pile and then I'm gonna wipe it into my hand to make my wife happy and because mom knows is telling me I should know better than to throw stuff on the floor but honestly, who has time to go to the trash can? Look how far away that is. So, where is, oh, your frame. I, see, I've already lost it. All right, I've lost it more ways than one. So, in order to mount the lenses, we're going to tuck it in at the outside corner. Using my thumbs, I press down at the nose, and it snaps right in. Look at that. Look at that. So, in the future, Rue, if you need new lenses to take them out of your frame, you place your thumb on the lens, you put your fingers on the other side so it doesn't fall out. 
I place my other thumb against there, push out at the nose, actually on these because the curvature, you can lift up on the frame, push that out to put the lenses in, tuck it in at the outside corner and using the thumbs, push down at the nose and actually it snaps in all the way around. But let's go ahead and take this block off. Again, my hand approved drying method, throw that back in there, put the sticker on top, come down here to the lensometer. I'm gonna put it in above that black dot read the power off and I am getting minus 450 exactly halfway between four and five look at that minus 450 I couldn't have done a better job if I'd cut these lenses myself now your pupillary distance 32 for the right eye 32 for the left for a total of 64 normally I turn the card around but because the black dots on the lenses I'm gonna place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens when we hold it up to the left lens let me do it to the light well I guess you can't see the numbers then maybe through there. We're getting 64 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. So this is the portion that as I clean your lenses, and I mentioned that there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And last time I checked, Jackson, Mississippi is in the U.S. That's a great town I hear. Great college town, um, beautiful city, beautiful architecture. Anyone passing through, spend a few days there in Jackson. Now I'm not part of the tourist committee. No one's paying me to say that. I'm saying it on my own. But I just hear wonderful things about that town. I'd love to go there myself. So, in fact, if you buy 10 pair from me, maybe I can deliver them personally. But this is what your lenses look like when the, you have a uh, polarized lens, a polarized gray installed into the frame. So, again, this is the Ray-Ban 4105, color 601, shiny black. This does come in a matte black. It comes in a tortoise i believe it's a matte tortoise no actually it's the shiny tortoise it also comes i still have a few left a blue front with black temples i'm all about no okay i'm glad i'm talking about this i'm going to get this in standard but when you get these in mail of course free shipping as i said but there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that's because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that statistic 99 percent of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them but i'm gonna get these in standard alignment first also known as a three-point stance the three points are one two and the bottom of the frame being three i set it on the counter and press down there is no wobble when i say wobble i'm part of that 80 percent when i take mine off and press down on the counter they wobble on the counter but they sit level on me so I am wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer, color 6053, which is the blue crystal. I wear a lot of blue shirts with a print, so that always matches well. Now, this is a sunglass. This is a sunglass. You got them with clear lenses in them at first. I got them with clear lenses in them at first. So, but there's the one more color I was alluding to comes with a blue front on here and black temples. I still have a few of those left. That's a discontinued model. But I bought several of them when I knew they were going to be discontinued. And I love blue. I just want to make sure to have them to offer to people. If there's anyone out there who wants them in the blue color, email me and I'll make it happen. So flip these over. Press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. And that neither temple is askew like that. So thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. You can reach me by email on the contact me page on the website or email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Or better yet, I ask everyone to leave a comment uh, in the comment section below. That way other, or a question or a comment. That way other people can read it and benefit from that. So, Brandon, I send out a selfie request in every package. You must have missed that on the first pair or else you would have sent me your selfie wearing the clear pair. But I'm going to include that in there because I'd love to have your picture on the website. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only how to care for the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I provide, but for your Ray-Ban, it's in here somewhere, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that you're going to get. So not only will it give you instructions on how to care for your frame and lenses so they'll last you for years, but on both cleaning cloths and the case. So those two will last you for years. No other seller on the internet does that, I'm told. I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works. Mom, look, you can see that it works. He'll be able to keep his, his lenses clean. So when you get these in the mail and you see a wrinkle in there, you know that it works. I field test every one. So, again, thanks for watching. Mom, thanks for the purchase of the 
Ray-Ban 4105, color 601 shiny black in the 50 eye size. This also comes in a 54 eye size. Stay tuned. You're going to see one of those in a video next week with uh, Transitions green lenses. Someone placed an order for these today. So, again, thank you for the purchase of Ruse glasses. And if I can be any more help, just email me. Be glad to take care of, of anything I can for you. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.